Chapter 381, It's Spinning Out of Control This time, the entire line of practitioner trafficking had been uprooted after the extermination of its head. Most pitifully, though, Lu Xu and his sister did not get any monetary benefits in the end. He had noticed a general trend on the Darkness Kingdom site, that trading was a considerably popular thing. If the times were not right, people would rather keep their items than an unfavorable sale. Thus, exchanging for cash had become less preferable. In fact, for those organizations, they had no shortage of money, only for resources like suitable weapons for their members. But Lu Xu was not that rich and money was still of use to him. His greatest loss was his inability to search the Class B professional for precious loot. Speaking of which, he suddenly recalled another treasure of his, which almost slipped his mind due to the one-month training following the acquisition. His magical instincts probed into his seal of lands, in search of the item. To his surprise, the originally dimly lit interior of the seal was now as bright as the daylight. A stream of glowing water was wandering inside haphazardly, like a cotton-like cloud in the sky. But its golden radiance was too blinding. Was it still water? Using his water control special powers, it behaved exactly the same as normal water. Moreover, there seemed to exist a higher order connection between himself and the water, which made it easier to control. Keeping his door shut, Lu Xu retrieved the glowing river from his seal of lands. A stream of golden light then appeared in front of him, it flowed in the air and harbored terrific power. To the best of his memory, Lu Xu could not remember this force in the approaching tides back then. Could it have been his trump card in case of emergencies? But before he could use it he ended up getting killed by Nye Ting who had unexpectedly ascended to Class A. In the end, however, Lu Xu became the final beneficiary. But what use did the water serve? As lighting? It seemed a pretty practical function. Out of curiosity, Lu Xu moved the glow closer to floor. Then, he was shocked to see a hole in the floor at the point of contact. Frightened, Lu Xu immediately recalled his Golden River back into Madair. Was it really so powerful? After some deliberation, he took out from his seal of lands the rusted sword, his loot from the Gungi Black Market, and brought it closer to the light. In the next second, the blade became agitated, and all energy therein concentrated at the contact point with the golden light for resistance. But it was useless. Soon enough, all energy was depleted and the magical weapon turned into an ordinary article, while the golden water seemed to have become stronger. What the? Is it eating magical weapons? Lu Xu was astounded. Despite its excellent corrosiveness, the glowing water required magical weapons for further strengthening of its power. Such a costly project for Lu Xu. However, Lu Xu had always been envious of Anthony's ability to cause temporary failure of magical weapons, by surrounding them with deep sea white sand. Now, he could perform the same, or even better. But he could not set his expectations too high either. If his opponent was a Class B flying dagger user, the dagger would obviously be faster than his golden water, and he would surely be dead before his water started siphoning power from the dagger. Then, Lu Xu heard the door open, followed by Li Yixiao's voice. <laughs> How boring it must be to stay in this safe house. You should have witnessed the splendid nightlife of Pattaya with me. What an experience. His tone was overflowing with pride and satisfaction. Lu Xu took back his golden water at once and walked out of his room, but froze immediately, did you get struck by lightning? Li Yixia was as black as charcoal from head to toe, as though he had just been grazed by lightning. Do you not know you are like this now? Then Lu Xu remembered the fight just now as recounted by Lu Xiaoyu. Li Yixia went through the thunderbolt and drove a fist into the materialization type pro. So, he was indeed struck by lightning. Legend has it that people acquire superpowers after getting struck by lightning. Therefore, Lu Xu asked in hesitation, after the lightning, do you feel that you are somehow different? Lu Xiaoyu sneered, experience? Of how it feels like to get scorched by a thunderbolt. That displeased Li Yixiao. 
he then drew a startled breath at his reflection in the mirror. My goodness, who was that poor man looking back at him? He wanted to boast about his adventure that night, but was totally unaware that Lu Xiaoyu and Lu Xu had had a front row seat of what truly happened. Having failed, Li Yixiao scratched his head in embarrassment, it's not a big deal, you know? I had a fight on the way, but that guy's capabilities couldn't match up to mine at all. After so many years, I, Li Yixiao, am still a success in the cultivation society. Do you know what my greatest strength is? Lu Xiaoyu curled her lips, shamelessness? From Li Yixiao's distress, plus 666. Lu Xu pondered for two seconds, a tough head? From Li Yixiao's distress, plus 666. Li Yixiao felt misunderstood, it's my wisdom and courage. Lu Xu showed no effort in hiding his sarcasm, well done. Meanwhile, Lu Xiaoyu whipped out her phone at once, hello? Grandpa, there's someone showing off here and it's spinning out of control. Of course, we are at. Li Ishia was stunned, who are you calling? Which grandpa? Who do you think? Lu Xiaoyu tilted her head to Li Ishiao, her face emotionless. From Li Ishiao's distress, plus 999. <laughs> Look how naughty you are. I'm going out for a walk now. Sleep early. Li Ishiao immediately walked out of the house without a second thought. How many grandpas did Lu Xiaoyu have? Two. The old priest and Li Xianyi. Now in Pattaya, who would she call for help? Definitely not someone friendly. Lu Xiaoyu's phone number had been changed to a temporary one for overseas use, including hundreds of MB of data and 100 minutes of free call. But Li Xianyi used a satellite phone and his number had remained the same. Just a while ago, all practitioners in the city were alerted to his arrival. Since they had not seen each other for a long time, Lu Xiaoyu phoned the old man. Initially, Li Xianyi was upset about the disruptive chaos in the city. But now, Lu Xiaoyu's timely call informed him of her whereabouts, it was a piece of uplifting news, just like the noon sun over the sea. The old man casually rose into the sky and hurried to the southern part of the city. He almost could not help but start to hum a song to express his good mood. It was a strange mixture of happiness and the sense of accomplishment, it was even more pleasing than his own breakthrough to Class A, which mainly brought about greater responsibilities. At the current moment, however, it was pure joy. He felt as if his granddaughter had just prepared him a thoughtful gift after traveling elsewhere. In summary, all the love and care he showered on Lu Xiaoyu had been worth it. Chapter 382 Strangers Doing his best to avoid unnecessary attention, Li Xianyi descended from the sky in silence. In order to protect Lu Xiaoyu and Lu Xu, his family, he certainly did not want the news of them entering the remain made known. Actually, the Golden Foundation was not on good terms with a number of organizations. The very fact that he himself was the host of the event this time was already mired in disputes. In spite of his power, the randomization mechanism in the remain made it hard to ensure Lu Xiaoyu's safety. Even if something happened, it would be almost impossible to track down the killer, for he could not just wipe out all the experts in the remain simply in the name of revenge. The remain was an especially dangerous place, unlike the outside world. The key issue was the lack of effective communication tools. All devices, including radios and walkie-talkies, would malfunction inside, as though the space there followed a completely different set of rules. Li Xianyi used the darkness as his cover and gently landed in the yard. Lu Xiaoyu was already waiting, Lu Xu, when can you learn to fly? I want to fly around with you. It was a class A-only ability, Lu Xu thought to himself. When Li Xianyi was not around, he could brag by saying it was gonna be soon, but now. Li Xianyi's smile was amicable, he will be able to do that when he reaches class A, by then, your sea of qi will be resonating with nature, naturally carrying you afloat in the air. Lu Xu replied awkwardly, what if I cannot unlock my sea of qi? I'm afraid strength-type metahumans are not flyers. We are jumpers. 
From Li Xiani's Distress, plus 188. Truth be told, Li Xiani was unsure about that as well. By right, indeed they could never fly, as their only power was simply their physical strength. Besides, Lu Xu's grudge was apparent. Well, Li Xiani felt a tad unease, maybe you can fly. But as for how, do you have any ideas? Excuse me? You were asking me. Lu Xu sneered, of course I do. I can watch other people fly. From Li Xiani's distress, plus 666. In fact, he had a question for the old man as well. Lu Xu threw his confusion at him once Li Xiani was inside the house, Grandpa, my snow mountain is about to collapse. What should I do next? Can I unlock my sea of qi after it falls? Or do I have to redo my practice again? With his brows knitted together, Li Xiani pondered for a long moment, good question. Lu Xu? Wait a moment. So you forgot to help me figure out a way. Lu Xu was unhappy. Li Xiani froze for an instant and immediately waved his hands, it's a rare reunion today. Not a time to speak about cultivation. From Li Xiani's distress, plus 262. Lu Xu's face darkened at once, you have no ideas at all, right? You are getting upset the moment you think of this matter, can you please be more helpful? Honestly speaking, Li Xiani did care about Lu Xu for a while after they parted last time, for the young man could almost be considered his apprentice. If there was something wrong with his teaching, Li Xiani could not simply evade his responsibilities. However, he did not manage to reach a conclusion after the arduous research, because there was no record of such cases in their classical books. A total of three days of flipping through all comments did not lead to any concrete solutions, but one thing was clear. Li Xiani was probably the worst teacher ever since the inception of the faction. Moreover, he had misguided a super genius. To him, Lu Xu's supreme talent was unquestionable. After all, no one else except for the Grandmaster had achieved a snow mountain before the opening of his Sea of Qi, no, even the Grandmaster was not as good as Lu Xu. However, this very genius was now unable to unlock his Sea of Qi under the suppression of his snow mountain, all thanks to Li Xiani himself. Li Xiani quickly diverted Lu Xu's attention, Xiao Yu, why are you here? To follow Li Xiao into the remain, of course. He dragged Lu Xu along, Lu Xiaoyu explained. Li Xiani was certainly aware of the danger of overseas remains. Now, Li Xiao's image in his heart had transformed into a jerk who tricked his granddaughter into peril. Lu Xu commented, you don't have to enter the remain. I can go in myself and you wait for me outside. Although he trusted that Lu Xiaoyu was capable enough to face dangerous situations by herself, he was still worried about her safety. There was no need at all for such a young girl to risk her life in coming to Pattaya. Amidst a crowd of experts, a little girl surely seemed like an easy target, which would result in loads of trouble despite her remarkable abilities. No way. I'm going in. Lu Xiaoyu protested. With two Class B spirits at her command, she was fearless. Why would they refuse her entry? Furthermore, the top priority would be the relic, not changing the remain into a combat competition. Li Xiani frowned, this remain is unlike the one in our country. Don't goff in, Xiaoyu. How about keeping me company outside? No. I follow Lu Xu wherever he goes, Lu Xiaoyu was determined. Sadly, in Lu Xiaoyu's heart, Li Xiani's level of significance could never overtake Lu Xu's. But Li Xiani did not aim to compare either, as he was well aware of how difficult it was for the two kids to survive until today. Li Xiani thought for a while, Lu Xu, don't miss this opportunity of obtaining the relic. After the remain disappears, there's bound to be a grand fight in the city. The possession of the relic is equivalent to the eternal possession of the remain itself. Currently, the remain is deemed as the best shot at resources and survival means by all organizations. In other words, the owner of the relic was not finalized until their return to the original world. The outbreak of another series of tangled fights would almost be certain when others tried to make the relic theirs. 
The old man lowered his voice, don't worry too much, though. I can keep you safe as long as you get out in one piece. Actually, Lu Xu did not place high expectations on acquiring the relic. With dozens of Class B experts ready to shed their blood for it, it would be quite unrealistic to sneak the relic away under their eyes. Nonetheless, Li Xianyi's presence would eliminate all inconveniences once they got out of the remain. At the current moment, Li Xianyi was his and Lu Xiaoyu's biggest talisman. There was no reason to willfully reject such a talisman. The most memorable lesson that life had taught him was to be practical. But, as for Li Yixiao, he had become completely unbridled the moment he passed the national boundary. Who knows what he would do in the remain? If he really screwed things up in there, Lu Xu would be more than happy to treat him as a stranger ever after, as long as they were safe. Chapter 383 The Practitioner's Market After that, Lu Xiaoyu showed the old man her phone gallery, this is Naughty Pig, and Big Cat. Lu Xu bought this house on the hill, and this is our farmland. Li Xianyi hesitated before asking, why do you only grow chives, Lu Xu? Easy to sell, Lu Xu was busy thinking about his sea of qi and the snow mountain. He felt miserable about the prospects of this killer weapon of his. Lu Xiaoyu passed her phone to Li Xianyi for him to scroll through the photos himself. She loved to take photos and Li Xianyi would have a rough idea of the happenings around the siblings based on the pictures and Lu Xiaoyu's description. Of course, Lu Xiaoyu was smart enough to exclude big secrets in it, like Anthony. Still, in a fit of annoyance, Lu Xu shot a glance at Li Xianyi, Grandpa, you can switch to the next photo with a swipe of your finger. There's no need to apply your saliva. Lu Xu was feeling bad for the new phone he had just bought for Lu Xiaoyu. Li Xianyi paused, habits. From Li Xianyi's distress, plus 401. The old man was never familiar with phones. Now, although he got himself a satellite phone so he could receive Xiaoyu's calls, it was not a touchscreen one either. All right, Li Xianyi wiped clean the screen with his sleeve and returned the phone to Lu Xiaoyu. Honestly speaking, he was not too worried about the Lu siblings, as they had been living well even before they met him. Thus, there was no reason they would be worse off after he left and Li Xianyi did not think it was necessary to give himself any extra credits. In fact, most people like to be extra. They easily got the wrong idea that they were replaceable and unimportant if other people's lives were equally good regardless of their presence. Then, they may try hard to do something so as to seem special. Li Xianyi did not stay for long. Before he left, he reminded them, this time, the Golden Foundation has sent people into the Remain as well, led by Ji Wei. You have probably met before, but I'm not sure if you still remember him. They will be wearing our logo. However, bear this in mind, never let your guard down against them, although they are more reliable than others in most situations. After all, people can change. It served as a hint that there might have been something wrong inside the foundation. According to Li Xianyi, during the Great Depression before the Spirit Qi regeneration, the Golden Foundation was the biggest entity of superpowers in the world. These days, however, its status was under constant attack. This had resulted in two branches of ideologies, one to uphold the foundation's vision of peace and protection while the other advocated for an active competition for resources, so as to better fulfill the Foundation's duties. There was no clear right or wrong. But Lu Xu would certainly get all he could before he started on the topic of who needed a guardian. The other party was not at fault either. Competitions brought about casualties and no one would yield their resources for free to the Golden Foundation. After a long moment, the name Ji Wei finally rang a bell. Was he not the guy who was good at bearing grudges? Within ten minutes after Li Xianyi was gone, a new entry of distress points flashed on Lu Xu's background panel. From Li Yixiao's distress, plus 999. Lu Xu drew a startled breath, it seemed he went after Li Yixiao, that was totally unexpected from Li Xianyi's earlier reaction. It must have been due to Lu Xiaoyu's words about Lu Xu being roped in by Li Yixiao. Otherwise, his distress points would not have been attributed to him. Although quiet, the old man could take really harsh action. 
Soon, Li Xiao climbed over the walls behind the safety house into the yard stealthily. He poked his gigantic head into the window, his face swollen with bruises, did the old man come back after he beat me up? Did I reveal anything? Everything's clear on your face, Lu Xu hissed, quickly take a shower and get changed. Speaking of which, where did you go at night, Heavenly Kingly? Pattaya is not safe now. You must be more careful outdoors. Without capabilities of my level, I can't guarantee your safety, Li Ishiao avoided the question. It would be simpler to not mention where he went. But in reality, among the three of them, everyone was safe excluding himself. Before he entered the bathroom, Li Ishiao added, We reached here later than many organizations. They came more than a month ago. Also, many practitioners' markets are already open in secret, where goods are exchanged or sold. I know a rather popular place and the one hosted by the Golden Foundation is relatively safe. We can go and take a look tomorrow. Although the invitation is indeed hard to get, with me, you don't have to worry. We are not worrying about anything. Please, we have eyes and brains, Li Xiao was on Lu Xiaoyu's current version of the blacklist. In fact, obtaining an invitation was not a difficult issue, as it simply served to distinguish between the commoners and the practitioners. Li Xiao had already received one before he headed to Thailand, from Nye Ting. Such markets were of interest to the Heavenly Network, as it was a rare opportunity to have international cultivation resources gathered in one place. Thus, the network hoped to acquire some magical weapons for focus training of some internal practitioners. Surely, it was not Li Xiao's duty. Why not? Because Nye Ting was not out of his mind yet. Lu Xu and Lu Xiaoyu exchanged a look of assurance, he needed such markets. Sixty magical stones were a universally valuable currency. Be it metahumans or practitioners, everyone could use it to accelerate the growth of their power. Unsurprisingly, some rich people even bought it for their magical pets. With regard to other stuff, Lu Xu had not decided whether to sell his eleven petals which was equivalent to the combined energy of 660 magical stones. He had to judge the situation carefully before he showed them in public. At this moment, the doorbell rang. Lu Xu whispered cautiously, I'm going to open the door. Be careful. This meant, get ready to attack if the visitor was malicious. Unexpectedly, outside the door stood Ji Wei. What was he doing here? Ji Wei smiled and looked at Lu Xu without uttering a word. After the last meeting, he took great efforts in coming up with a counter against Lu Xu's nasty greeting. His final decision was to let Lu Xu greet him first. Ji Wei almost jumped at the idea. How brilliant! After a long and silent two minutes, Lu Xu raised his brows and an English word escaped his teeth, hello. From Ji Wei's Distress, Plus 666 Chapter 384, Failed Within Three Moves Ji Wei had always been known as the wise man in the Golden Foundation. In the Lao's Remain, he played a vital role in coming up with a strategic plan to secure the relic. Back then, the Foundation had a good chance of winning right from the start. But their plan was ruined by a fatty named Li Xiao. Then, Ji Wei did an accurate analysis of Li Yixiao's behavioral patterns, which led to a series of strategies including distraction, temptation, deception, and alienation, but they were all countered by the knife behind Li Yixiao's smile. Strictly speaking, it was a literal meaning, as Li Yixiao's weapon during that bloodshed was indeed a knife. One could not deny that the headstrong Li Yixiao truly had a strong head. All experts from the various organizations across the globe were utterly routed by Li Yixiao alone in the Lao's remain. This left a bad impression of Li Yixiao in Li Xianyi's mind. In the end, Ji Wei turned to his last resort. When everyone else saw Li Yixiao as the common target, the foundation was finally able to get a chance at the relic. This very opportunity also allowed Ji Wei to acquire the life-saving herbs for Li Xianyi. No matter how many times he had failed, the final result was positive, which earned Ji Wei a great reputation within the Golden Foundation. 
However, a man as legendary as Ji Wei did not manage to get past three moves in front of Lu Xu. The three moves referred to three greetings. Lu Xu's style gave Ji Wei a serious headache. He took a deep breath to calm himself down and walked away once the two slips of invitations were handed to Lu Xu. He needed to figure out a new way of greeting him the next time they met. From Ji Wei's distress, plus three, plus three, plus three. With the invitation in his hands, Lu Xu was puzzled, was this the hard-to-get invitation that Li Xiao was talking about? It was merely a piece of paper that granted permission to enter. As a tourist destination, tens of thousands of visitors flock to Pattaya for a cozy winter every year. In a time of increasingly convenient transportation, climate migration was becoming a more popular choice among the financially able. Hence, spending one's winter in the South had for a long time become a top choice for Chinese tourists. Currently, however, there were more practitioners and metahumans in Pattaya than the city had ever seen. As a matter of fact, most practitioners beyond Class C were comparatively rich and some were already living a luxurious life in Pattaya. Li Ixiao was an exception. And Lu Xu would never admit to his huge fortune either. It made sense to open practitioners' markets here. There, Lu Xu realized there were people below Class C joining in the fun as well. The number of those ranging from Class F to D were more than 10 times that of the Class Cs and beyond. Some people came solely to try their luck at getting something precious in the remain. In that giant treasure box, the pros would certainly cast their eyes on the relic with which the entire remain would belong to them. Thus, the clever choice would be to forego some less valuable items on their way to the final target. Meanwhile, the weaker ones could pick up the leftovers. Sure, there were certain elements of danger in the remains. Still, a handful were willing to gamble on their lives for the potential of a better future. At the same time, there were those who simply hoped to practice on the periphery of a remain. It was an open secret in the cultivation realm that a remain had surprising benefits on one's training progress. It was like an upgraded experience pill. Without additional cultivation resources on usual days, the remain was a rare and worthy opportunity. After all, a plane ticket was nothing to them. Others came to Pattaya to exchange their magical weapons or cultivation resources for money or more ideal objects. Lu Xu glanced over at Li Xiao, Hey, Heavenly Kingly, are you a buyer? Li Xiao could not remove his gaze from the market, buyer? Ha! <laughs> I'm a seller. Don't tell me you are selling your black dragon spear, Lu Xu was in shock. He did not know if Li Xiao had any other possessions except for his spear. Magical stones. I'm selling magical stones. Li Xiao emphasized. Lu Xu nodded in acknowledgement. Li Xia must have loads of them as even Lu Xu himself received eight stones monthly. But, a heavenly king selling magical stones abroad, was that not a miserable story? In Lu Xu's expectation, the quality of the items for sale inside should be relatively trustworthy. If a class E sold some counterfeit to a class B, his dishonesty might cost him his life. With the invitation card, they were allowed to enter. Actually it was just a sizable hotel rented by the Golden Foundation for use as a market. Probably aware of their customer's identity, the waiters and waitresses were extremely polite and careful. Indeed, it was a commoner's normal reaction in front of so many practitioners. All things considered, the service here was probably the best in Pattaya now, even better than that of those pretty girls in skimpy clothing. The market managed by the Golden Foundation was the most popular among all. Despite the negative voices about the foundation, its well-known transparency and fairness had attracted many clients. In addition to their considerations for personal safety, the foundation was doing its best in the protection of consumer and seller rights. Thus, in times of conflicting interests, the Golden Foundation seemed like an eyesore to many influential organizations who had no alternatives but to swallow their dissatisfactions. However, the foundation was very much respected by the unaffiliated practitioners, who viewed it as a great honor to even be able to join them. In fact, 
What the foundation was to them was equivalent to what Tsinghua or Peking University was to local students. Speaking of which, Lu Xu's dream school used to be Tsinghua University or Peking University. In reality, however, he was fated to be a student at a practitioner's school and not some normal university. Regardless, Lu Xu had decided to boast about his life stories by saying, as an outstanding student wanted badly by Tsinghua University and PKU at the same time. He, determined to be a guardian of human society, to protect peace and defeat the evil, gave up the much-coveted education opportunity and went to empty Beimang University. Wait a minute, the Chinese short form for PKU was Beidei, Bei, standing for Beijing, Peking, and Des for Dashue, University, exactly the same as that for empty Beimang University. As he seriously thought about it, could he not claim that he was a Spade student in the future? It was not like it was a lie anyway. Li Xiao stood at the entrance of the market and froze at the address code of the place, why do they like to cover themselves up? Most of the people there were hiding their faces behind hoods, masks or caps. Although they trusted the clean work ethics of the Golden Foundation, they had to adopt some protective measures so as not to paint a target on their own backs. Li Xiao grinned, doesn't matter. We are upright and honorable people. There's no need to. Before he could finish his sentence, Lu Xu and Lu Xiaoyu simultaneously took out caps and masks from their backpacks. From Li Xiao's distress, plus 199. Lu Xiaoyu was at the prime age during puberty, and she had shot past 157 centimeters in merely half a year. Thus, her height was not much shorter than most girls. Since there were many boy-girl pairs, they seemed too ordinary to be remembered. Chapter 385 Failed Within Four Moves Despite having two Class B Pro spirits in her hands, they were slightly weaker than real people. Moreover, the materialization expert Johnson had yet to be conjured up and it would take around seven days to unlock the first star in Lu Xiaoyu's third celestial map starting from that day. It was too early to have fun just yet. Leaving Li Xiao behind them, Lu Xu and Lu Xiaoyu went straight ahead. Lu Xu's main purpose this time was not money, but a deeper insight into this cultivation world and its price range. Usually, most people's worldviews were built on the value of money, for example, the cost of living, housing, and average income. Mere descriptions of the scenery may not offer a middle-aged woman a feel about the life there. But if you mentioned the level of affluence or poverty locally, she would have a general idea of the place very quickly. And Lu Xu decided to take this opportunity to learn more about the conditions of practitioners across the world, whether they were affiliated or not. As far as he could see, the individual practitioners' overall capabilities were more or less the same as those of Daoyuan class students, and they were still at the starting point. Suddenly, they heard Li Xiao, who was squatting in front of a stall and scratching his head agitatedly, this, this, one. What money? The Caucasian vendor was utterly confused by his awkward English. Lu Xiaoyu sighed in disbelief, how surprising. I didn't expect him to know the word a money. Well, I did, Lu Xu also sighed, but with a tad tone of helplessness. There were magical stones on sale as well, and they were of similar shape and size as those in the Chinese market. It seemed that the stones were almost a universal currency in the cultivation realm. Perhaps, the cultivation community was the pioneer to the unification of international currencies before the commoners could do so, due to the complexity of interests involved. It was said that there was once a fight on an island which led to the demise of over ten class Cs. The violence was spearheaded by three practitioners fighting for the ownership of a magical stone mine on the island. At this moment, Lu Xu saw Ji Wei walking towards him with a confident smile. Before he could stand still, Lu Xu held his hands together and said, Sawat di Kapu. Ji Wei immediately walked away, the corner of his mouth twitched a little. From Ji Wei's distress, plus 666. In Thailand, boys were supposed to greet one another with Sawati Kapu, with a Piu being a silent syllable. Many tour guides like to teach the wrong things. 
For instance, they would say Shui Jingjing was used to describe a pretty girl while La Mama meant a handsome boy. In fact, they were but a joke to please the tourists, not a real local phrase. Unlike Li Xiao, in spite of Lu Xu's lack of experience in oral English, basic conversation was totally manageable for him. If the other person slowed down his speech, he could roughly understand him too. Meanwhile, Li Xiao had given up on his failed attempt and wanted to ask Lu Xu for help. However, Lu Xu was already gone. From Li Xiao's distress, plus 499. Concurrently, Lu Xu was preparing for his own exchange. His standard swords were out of the question for sure, as it would be hard to explain their origin. Lu Xu might be mistaken to be a killer with two Heavenly Network fighters' blood on his hands. In fact, one was from a spy and the other from the black market. But who would believe him? Thus, Lu Xu had made up his mind to feed them his golden water. Recycling was a good virtue. As for the golden water, obviously it was given to him by Nieting on purpose. He did not have to worry about being questioned. Furthermore, Lu Xu did not plan on selling the fruits capable of assisting with power awakening. Such valuable objects might easily attract malicious individuals as it was an urgent need for those rich practitioners, stuck at the bottleneck. Thus, a fight would be unavoidable should such items appear on the market. In Lu Xu's opinion, it was of the same standard as refresher fruits. He could give one of them to Xiao Yu for a power boost before the remain and save the other one for another suitable time. Lu Xu wondered, what power would Lu Xiao Yu gain? All of a sudden, the purple golden gourd in Lu Xu's seal of lands started trembling violently as he walked past a stall. Actually, it was more like the flying dagger was excited. Trying hard to suppress his exhilaration, Lu Xu looked around. He had always been treating the gourd as the deity-slaying dagger. When the gourd and the flying dagger suddenly combined into a rather impressive-looking object, Lu Xu's anticipation went unfulfilled. In the end, not only did he fail to achieve any tangible benefits, the basic function of his gourd was also gone. And now, there was a reaction in the dagger again. What if it required all three components to work? No matter what, Lu Xu would get the third piece. Why was Lu Xu so certain about the existence of the third component? Because it happened before. The current gourd was already a product pieced together. Looking as if nothing had happened, he loitered around at the place, only to realize that the dagger was more excited when he walked to the left. He wasted some time at the adjacent stall for a while, until he finally came to his target. After studying the vendor for a few seconds, he asked, an individual practitioner from China? Surprised, the man looked back at him and replied in Chinese, no. My ancestors were from China though, and we are now Malaysian residents. I see, Lu Xu nodded his head in acknowledgement. Malaysia was well known for its large Chinese population. Thus, it made perfect sense that something he was selling was brought abroad by the vendor's ancestors. If he said he was a North American, Lu Xu would certainly question the reliability of the matter. After all, the probability of transferring something to such a remote place was considerably slim. Lu Xu took a careful look at the few items on sale, one by one, before Lu Xu cleared his throat, what do you sell? What use do they have? The vendor gave a description of each item. They were all ancient articles with little energy remaining. Thus, most of their functions were already lost, except for less useful ones like lighting up under the installation of magical energy. However, inexperienced in weapon repair, the man had no other options but to trade them at low prices for cultivation resources. What does it mean to be happy? Cause it looks like we all don't know Glass half full or empty And we just put them on the show Try to look to the heavens